Hey guys, welcome back to Native Bean. One of the most useful and necessary features in any technology, right to the database. In previous videos, I have already talked to you about how to consume information from the database and any other sources as integrations. However, in today's video, I will show you the different ways of writing to the database. Saving information is totally necessary for an application that needs to access its data over time. The use of a database has several advantages over other conventional storage methods such as spreadsheets or text files. These advantages are accessibility, integrity, and security. APIAN supports a wide variety of relational databases such as MySQL, Oracle, MariaDB, Microsoft SQL Server, and more. I will leave the link in the description with the rest of them. Just remember that each of the database has its own considerations. Some of them must be configured in its own CDT or when you are creating the CDT from the database. For example, in Oracle, it is necessary to specify a sequence, which is a type of object used for the incremental generation of integer values, generally associated with the primary keys of the tables. For this exercise, we have three tables in the database, employee, department, employee department relationship and employee devices. As you can see, there is a one-to-many relationship and a many-to-many -many relationship. I have mapped the tables to new CDTs. Their relationships are shown as small blue key icons. However, we are going to use a new concept in the channel, nested CDTs. Depending on the purpose of the nested CDTs are the settings that must be provided. The first example is when a catalog type of CDT is being nested. That is a single value that should be not modified. In this case, it will be the department CDT with the department and employees relational CDT. This CDT must be read only and must be unique. The relationship must be specified through the foreign key as it appears in the child table. Additionally, it must be specified in the XSD as neither insert table nor modifiable. The second example is for the one-to-many relationship, an employee with many devices. In this case, the nested CDT device is multiple, editable, and insertable. In the same way, the relationship must be made through the foreign key in the child CDT. It must be exactly as it is declared in the database with capital letters and lowercase. There is no need to modify the XSD for this configuration. We'll do the same settings for the department employee relationship nested CDTs. When you query the employee table, which is our main CDT, APN will automatically do the joins and fill our nested CDTs. In the same way it reads, it will also automatically write to the nested CDT together with their new primary keys, except the department CDT that is read only. This rule has been created to be able to fill the CDTs. I have already explained this before, so I will only show the final result. Let's call this same rule two times. Within the interface, we have two buttons. The first one allows us to write to the database using the write to the database store entity function, where the data store entity that points to the main CDT must be specified, that is, employee. The other CDTs do not need to be registered in any data store to function as nested CDTs. However, I recommend it doing it for other purposes. The second button allows us to save the CDTs generated in the interface within the input rule and later use it in other version of the same write to data store entity function, but now as a smart service in the process model. In the outputs, we can save the result of their newly created CDTs. However, I have noticed that this doesn't work very well when there are several levels of CDTs. To retrieve all the inserted CDTs, I recommend having a script task that queries the database right after inserting them. The other option is to write to several tables at the same time using the write to multiple data store in smart service. This is not the same as inserting nested CDTs. You will have to have an order when inserting your CDTs to be able to correctly generate the relationships between them. I recommend using it for CDTs that do not have hierarchy with each other. To finish, we have an expression that query the main table. As you can see, it fills all the nested CDTs. It is the equivalent of doing joins in SQL. Personally, I think nested CDTs are one of the best features in Appian. They are very practical, relatively easy to use if you are very clear about how relationships in database work. However, Appian does not recommend it much due to the memory consumption at the time of making the queries. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it helped you. 